Hey y'all, Little Drummer Boy here, and today I want to talk about why Donald Trump is not the Antichrist. That's right, why President Trump is not the Antichrist. You know, um, President Trump has talked about staying in longer than two terms, and you know, he's he's uh, baited the, uh, the fake news media with, uh, like, signs that say Trump 24, 2024, 2028, 2032, you know, just on and on and on. And um, I would love to see him in for a third term. If they uh, amend the Constitution, he'll be 78 when he runs for a third term. So if he should run for the third term, so hopefully his health will still be good. You know, uh, he's never drank or smoked or any or done drugs so he should be good for about a buck 20 i would think <laughs> and he's got great security so uh he could cut back on on the fat a little bit probably but couldn't we all <laughs> anyway but look so you got the left and the fake news media always getting hysterical you know talking about a recession russia didn't work because that was a total farce the only one colluding with russia to win the election was Hillary and, and the Democratic Convention and the Obama FBI DOJ administration. The spying that Obama would have had to sign off on, yeah, that was a real Russian collusion. Um, but, uh, oh, and then, of course, racism didn't work. You know, Donald Trump has awards from the NAACP and Jesse Jackson about how how many minorities he hired and you know he had a great race record and nobody ever accused him of being a racist or a sex offender until he ran for president as a republican if he was still a democrat the democrats and the fake news media would be they would be triumphant all of his great successes but instead they give him absolutely no credit at all and what they do is you know try to diminish his successes and then blame everything under the sun on him. But anyway, so yeah, they want to call him, they say he's got a Messiah complex and they want to call him the Antichrist and all this stuff. Well, here's the first reason he is not the Antichrist. The Antichrist would never build a border wall. The Antichrist is not for walls. The Antichrist is not for countries. The Antichrist will have, the Bible tells us the Antichrist will have a one world government. And it's probably going to come out of the UN, the one world order that's already been talked up. But there's going to be no countries under the Antichrist. So Donald Trump is pro America. He said, I'm not the president of the world, I'm the president of the United States of America. And thank God we have a president who is America first. And I mean, as the president of America, you are the leader of the free world because there is no free world without America. But he's still the president of America. And he wants to put up border walls to uh, keep out people who aren't Americans and have no business being here and not come through the proper, proper channels to get here. Um, and thank God for that because you look at Kate Steinle's killer. He just got off the hook. Uh, he was deported five times before he murdered her. And now he just got off the hook on a technicality. Um, I hope the federal, I hope the federal government will take it up as a civil rights case, uh, uh, about Kate Steinle's civil rights being violated by him, but you've got MS 1300, MS 1300, MS 13, you've got, um, they're coming in and they kill people and dissect people alive just for fun. You've got, uh, According to Hannity, you've got kids being trafficked to New York City to be raped, sold and raped 30 to 50 times a day through our open border. You've got 300 Americans dying a week from opioid addiction, from drugs coming through that border. So praise God we've got a president that's finally not just talking about building a wall, but actually doing it. Building a, And you all have walls on your, don't say you're against the wall if you have walls on your house, you know, and a lock on your door. A wall, walls work, just ask Israel. It's not a wall to keep people in like the Berlin Wall. It's a wall to keep people that don't belong here out. And it works in Israel. It works every country uh, pretty much has one. We're stupid for not having one. And um, so anyway, walls work. The Antichrist will be one world government. So that's why the Antichrist agenda, the Antichrist party, the Democrats, the Demo so-called Democrats, 
the party of anti-God, anti-Christ, the party of anti-Bible, anti-America, anti-freedom, anti-capitalism, anti-law, that party, the Democratic Party, and I will say some of the Republicans as well, uh, because the establishment Republicans aren't much better than the Democrats. The One World Order, the Antichrist agenda, they all are against the wall because it gets in the way of, of the Antichrist agenda of One World Government and New World Order. That's why the wall was opposed so much by Satan and his minions, because it gets in the way of their plans. Trump is a monkey wrench in the... Uh, he is a monkey wrench in the New World Order order. He's a monkey wrench in the plans of the Antichrist. Now, eventually it will happen because the prophecies in the Bible come true. So Trump may have given us a reprieve on it, but eventually there will be a one world government, a new world order, and an Antichrist. You know, be ready, be prepared, uh, make sure your, your sins are prayed up. You've asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins and be Lord of your life so that you won't be left behind and have to live through the great tribulation. Because then salvation, it's by grace through faith you're saved, not of works right now, the Bible says. But during the great tribulation, salvation will depend on a work, and it's going to be a very hard work. You will have to deny the number of the beasts in your forehead or your hand, and you won't be able to uh, buy and sell. You won't be able to get food. And your head will be cut off if uh, if you don't take the number of the beast. But you'll be able to buy and sell, but you'll go to hell if you do take it. So you don't want to miss uh, the Lord coming back when he does. And by the way, I've, I've got some friends who, uh, well-meaning Christian friends, who get the rapture and the second coming mixed up. Uh, the Bible talks about in Thessalonians, we go up and a twinkling, Jesus comes back and then uh, the dead in Christ will rise first. Uh, those of us who remain will meet him in the air and be changed in the twinkling of an eye, which is like a second or less than a second, actually. Okay, and um, that's the second coming or what rap, uh, Latin calls the rapture, okay? And here's the difference, though. We meet him in the air. Jesus comes in the clouds. He does not set foot. So that's, I'm sorry, that's not the second coming. That's the calling up, the rapture. He does not set foot on the ground at that time, so it's not his second coming to earth. Got it? We meet him in the air and go up. All right? Seven years later, at the end of the Great Tribulation, Jesus and us come down. He sets his foot on the Mount of Olives in Israel, splits it in half. That is the second coming. That is his second return to earth. During the rapture, he does not return to earth. He meets us in the clouds. The second coming is when he sets, we come back with him and help him fight at the Battle of Armageddon. So if you've always wanted to be a soldier and a patriot and, and fight for your country and fight for Jesus and fight for freedom, Christian brothers and sisters, you will get your chance. We're all going to get to fight at the most epic battle of all, the Battle of Armageddon. Of course, Jesus is going to do probably most of the fighting. We're probably going to be more like cheerleaders, but it's going to be great to be in the, be there. I mean, it's going to be the most epic thing in history. And um, so anyway, I'm, I'm chasing a rabbit here, but... Maybe some of you needed to hear that. I hope so, because um, the time is short, um, and we're all sinners. Jesus died for our sins. Um, believe it and receive it. He'll forgive you of your sins and move them as far as the east is from the west, and he promises to put them in the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more against you. So anyway, so yeah, President Trump isn't the Antichrist, though, because he's building the wall. Something totally opposed to the Antichrist agenda of one world government. Also, President Trump, from what I hear, he's a young Christian. Dr. Dobson said he was saved a few years ago. And he believes, uh, you know, he may, he's not like a Bible scholar, but he, he's had a change of heart on abortion. He used to be against it. He used to be a Democrat. He repented, repented of being in that evil satanic party. He used, and I'm calling all of you Christians to repent from that evil party of slavery, the KKK, Planned Parenthood, wanting to kill off the black race as Margaret, wanting to kill off the human weeds as Margaret Sanger called blacks, and they're doing it. Thirty percent of uh, abortions are of black babies, even though 
blacks are 10 percent of our nation and um 80 according and that's according to live action according to sean hannity 80 percent of abortion uh extermination chambers planned parenthood extermination chambers are in uh black neighborhoods 80 percent so yeah their mission statement of killing off the black race is trucking right along um thankfully you know they haven't killed off the majority of you but um so i'm calling on black christians and christians in general to uh, Democrat exodus. Why would any Christian? I don't care if my mom and papa. I don't care if your parents were Democrats. My my dad was a Democrat. My uh, my mom was, but she's repented of it and she's Republican now. My grandparents on my dad's side were Democrats. My whole flipping family back to Andrew Jackson. They were, in, you know, we were I had Confederate ancestors. But the Democratic Party has changed. My grandparents were conservative Christians also. So was my dad and my mom. And and that's why my mom's changed. Uh, my grandparents and parents would not be Democrats if they came up today. Because in the last 50 years, the Democratic Party has taken a hard left against Christianity, against the Bible, against the Constitution, against America, against capitalism, against freedom. They stand for nothing good anymore, y'all. This is not President Kennedy's party anymore. They want to get rid of farting can farting canes. That would be something to see. They want to get rid of farting cows, planes, uh, cars, internal combustion engines. Although the electric cars run on electricity that is forty percent from coal. So I mean, they they're just confused. I need to pray for them. Because when they, you know, all they're doing switching to electric cars is switching from one fossil fuel to another. And I got nothing against fossil fuels, but I mean, they're contradicting themselves when they do that. It's kind of funny, but sad at the same time. Because they're lost. They're just lost. Um, the Bible says, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, you know. And, and these these people that, you know, I think Trump, Trump derangement syndrome is a real thing. They are... They're losing their minds because, and here's another reason why Trump is not the Antichrist. Okay, first of all, he believes the Bible on things like abortion. You shall not kill, and that means you shall not murder. The Bible ordained killing in war, and it ordained killing in capital punishment, killing condemned murderers. But you shall not murder is how that's properly translated, and uh, there's no... There's no sicker, more evil thing I've ever heard of in my life than someone killing an innocent baby in the womb. How's that different than killing an innocent baby outside the womb? Which the Democrats also support now. They've gone so batty and so demon-possessed. But, um, but yeah, another reason you know President Trump is not the Antichrist is God has his hands on him. The Bible says God appoints our leaders. Some he appoints to bless. And some, like King Ahab and Obama, he appoints to judge us to um, as punishment. and um, But with President Trump, I mean, you look at the economy, you look at the peace, unheralded peace and prosperity, best I've ever seen in my lifetime. He is definitely a blessing on this country that we do not deserve. He is the uh, answer to millions of our prayers, and we have no reason for God to answer our prayers. We have turned away from him and haven't turned back, but God, in his mercy and grace, has chosen to bless us with the phenomenal leader, volunteer president, I might add. Might add. He doesn't even take pay. He donates his salary as president and is losing lots of money as a businessman uh, in saving our country. Because make no mistake, if Hillary had won and put on a justice on the Supreme Court, uh, that uh, and the balance would have tipped, they would have tried to take our guns and all the freedoms our guns protect and then it would have been on the, the lib killing civil war new revolution would have been on if hillary would have won y'all just think about that president trump saved us from a civil war it would have been ugly real bloody and ugly if hillary had won because we're not going to lay down our guns because when you do that you lay down all your other rights just like nazi germany did just like the communists did you give up your guns you give up your rights and that's a fact a historical fact um so anyway, uh, sadly though, you got a lot of law enforcement out there. They're, they don't make the laws, but they either enforce them or get fired. And they're, they're basically they're wiping their butts on the Constitution every time they take a gun and enforce a gun law because these gun laws are 
unconstitutional, shall not be infringed. You know, what part of that don't you understand? Law enforcement, you need to stand up as one and stop enforcing these unconstitutional gun laws that make good law-abiding citizens defenseless against crazies who want to come shoot up people in so-called gun-free zones, which don't exist. There's no such thing as a gun-free zone. Um, because the lawbreaker is going to bring the gun in anyway, right? So anyway, I'm getting way sidetracked here. But yeah, basically, you know President Trump is not the Antichrist because, uh, one, he's building the border wall. Two, he uh, supports the Bible. Religious freedom, he, he made it where the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, IRS. He made the IRS stop persecuting pastors and uh, churches for preaching free speech. In the pulpit, you know, he threw out the tax exempt crap because the churches, and some people get this mixed up. Preachers and pastors were never tax exempt. I've got a lot of them in my family. They have to pay income taxes. So you people thinking that preachers were tax exempt, you don't know what you're talking about first off. Secondly, it, the churches as a charity are are not ta are tax exempt, okay? And Lyndon Johnson, when he was senator, President Lyndon Johnson, when he was senator in Texas, of Texas, there was a preacher who didn't like him that was preached against him, and that's why Lyndon Johnson got the Johnson Amendment passed. It was to shut up this preacher that was preaching against him. But basically, ever since then, and it was only used against Republicans. I mean, you had Hillary going into black churches saying, I've come too far, you know, with her terrible black accent and uh, trying to, uh, what do you call it, impersonate. And then Al Gore going in there, you know, uh, oh, I forget what he said, but he went in there and tried to act black preacher too. And then uh, Joe Biden going into black churches. They're going to put y'all back in chains. You know, uh, so the the Johnson Amendment was never, ever used to shut up Democrats going into black churches and politicking, but they wanted to use it to silence, to silence Christians from... Uh, free political speech in the pulpit. And we have freedom of religion in this country. It's what it was found on that and freedom of speech. So thank God we've got a president now that has done away with the enforcement of the Johnson Amendment. So now preachers, preach whatever you want, get as political as you want, and the IRS will not come after you. And vote for Trump in 2020 if you want to keep it that way. Um, but also, okay, God's hand is on President Trump. The Democrats have tried to take him down, and the media, the fake news, the establishment Republicans, the Democrats have all tried to take him down through Russia collusion, racism, the recession, but the economy is still strong and getting stronger. Um, the media has already been made fools of on this last recession talk. Um, but no matter how the forces of hell had tried to take President Trump down, he is standing firm. They can't take him down. You know why? God's hand is on President Trump. He is protected. He has a hedge of protection around him. And that's why the Democrats have Trump derangement syndrome, because it's exploding their heads that they can't take this guy down. Uh, and, you know, and he's doing great in spite of all their attempts to take him down. So anyway, y'all, Trump is not the Antichrist, but there will be one one day, uh, most likely, if the, if America is still around and our political system is still around, he will be a Democrat because they stand for everything anti-Christ. Believe me. Uh, you just look at the issues and it's true. So come out from among them, my people, God says. And that's what I believe he's saying to you, Democrat Christians. Come out from among, among them. Why would you be in the Nazi party? Why would you be in the Communist Party? Why would you be in the Democratic Party? Y'all like my content, like, share, and subscribe. Little Drummer Boy, thank you and have a blessed day.